So hey, totally man, um, welcome yeah. to the show. This is dope. What are you What are you drinking first and foremost? Well, uh, I thought we should drink some wine, so I got some wine going on here. Yeah. Oh, you got some wine too, sweet. Also got some tea <laughs> with my sweet with, mug with rubber bands and a unicorn uh, on it. Yeah. You, you never know when you need rubber bands, my friend. I guess not. Yeah. Um, mm. What? <laughs> nice. It's decaf green. Don't worry. I'm not going to be up all night tonight. Hopefully. Yeah, that would be good. That will. Okay. Well, I'm drinking. Um, I'm drinking Josh Cabernet Sauvignon. Do you know what you're drinking, or did you just pull a random? Oh, white? the kind. I, oh, I actually do. It's um, from the Litchfield Winery, Couvert Side White. It's very French. At least the name is. I I wait the Litchfield Litchfield Winery. Not to be confused with the Litchfield Distillery. Right. This is not from the Litchfield Distillery, which I've also been to. It's also quite delicious. Their bourbon is is to die for. But, um, nice. well, hey, cheers, brother. Let's get this started. Cheers. Okay. I appreciate the those... eye contact on the drink. Oh yeah, I. I... <laughs> Even when I go in for for a hug or a kiss, I'm just like, you know. The more awkward, um, the better. Yeah, it took it took my girlfriend some time to get used to, but you know she's she's into it now, so whatever <laughs> she's not into it um so um for for those who don't know you or maybe they do and they need a refresher um avi smith Rappaport is the owner and president of we care computers in west hartford connecticut uh, it's a managed service provider msp and full service computer technology company that you founded in 2004 good so far correct um also some bullet points that are just as interesting, if not more interesting. You're a super networker, which is going to be the, the main focus of the episode today. You are an Ironman runner, despite um, several physical setbacks that we're going to talk about um, potentially. And then you're also a world traveler and uh, I would say a philanthropist of time and money. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anything else, appreciate anything else you want to gloat about or like, uh, you know, just... I also have two boys. <laughs> who are, who oh, are that's right. Awesome. That's right. I didn't, and, uh, I didn't scroll and my down. wife Erica is pretty awesome, also. Yes, he's a family man. Um, so, ladies, back off. <laughs> he, he's taken and then some. So, um, did I cover that? Anything else you want to add that that you'd like to be known for before we go forward? I, I think that's fantastic. I really appreciate all the things you brought up. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I thought you were going to say like transformers connoisseur or something which would be pretty neat but um maybe for the so other the, podcast <laughs> yeah, yeah part two part two um so the the reason that i wanted to have you on kind of ties into how we met and how we met was through i believe the west hartford chamber of commerce if i remember correctly we exchange cards because that's what you do. You go up and it's like, oh, that's Linda. oh, cool. We should get coffee. That's great. You know, whatever. And it's really corny and cheesy, but I was new to it. And I was like, man, this is awesome. Like I'm going back and telling my bosses I'm getting great meetings and that sort of thing. Having no clue what tactical move I was going to make from it. But nonetheless, it was um, a good feeling to be um, interested in <laughs> and uh, to be basically connecting with people on, a, on, on that type of level and mutually helping one another grow. So um, that is going to be kind of the main topic today of just the power of building a network, um, both locally, nationally, um, expanding on your, your network that you have, etc. cetera. Um, but I wanted you to, to kind of run with some of this. I'll ask some of the questions, we'll riff, and we'll go from there. Terrific. In your experience, what has networking, what is networking to you? <clears throat> networking to me is basically resources. So having resources for myself and for those that I know. So to me, being a fantastic resource for others that I network with, mm -hmm. uh, and they could be for personal things. I mean, I guess I also, I got all, I got started with all this for business reasons. And then as, as I grew in my networking, I found out, Oh, I can use this for my friends as well. Uh, but yeah. business was really, really the, the, 
the biggest impetus to get me started in this and just being having all these resources at my fingertips for anything and everything I could imagine. And when I say resources, let me say trusted resources is also a very, very important thing because certainly you can go to the yellow pages or <laughs> like there's the yellow pages anymore. There might be um, Google or whatever <laughs> you're looking at. The web version I'm sure is <laughs> out there. Yeah. <laughs> yellow pages dot. I don't know if that exists anymore. Um, <laughs> Same with SG. resource. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that's what, that's what, that has been the most powerful thing for me, being a resource for others and allowing these and ha having these resources for myself and for whatever we need. Why, why should people do it? Um, I, I think at any stage in the game, uh, why, why should, why should people do it? And I want to, I want to ask that in two quick questions. Like first, if you're in a producer seat, a salesman, um, you know, owner of a business, whatever it may be, that's, that's the low hanging fruit. Why should they do it? Well, I think in order, well, I guess in some of those positions, you might have quotas and, and goals that you need to hit. And I think for me, the best way, the best leads I have ever gotten are always from a referral from someone in my network. Mm -hmm. Um, always, I mean, certainly we get business from other areas, from online, uh, other word of mouth, but when I get the best leads, it's someone I know who I trust and someone who knows me who trusts me and they feel strongly enough to allow this third party person to me to, to introduce them to me and then they trust me enough that we're gonna take care of them and do business, do business the right way for them. Um, so I think if you're a producer in a sales role, this is, this is pure gold. I mean, if you can create a network of endless referrals, uh, a guy wrote a book like that who I really appreciate. I don't know if we give plugs here. Um, By all but, means. Oh, Bob Berg, love that man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard from him years ago and he's, now we're connected on LinkedIn and he writes back to me once in a while when I write, he's like my idol for this. Uh, but it, it's just, I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no stopping you, man. <laughs> when, when you can do that and you can get referrals and get people to trust you as a producer, you'll go far. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Um, I, I think that's really fair to say. And some of my first business that I ever got in this role that I'm in uh, was through networking. And I wouldn't have had the first year that I had uh, certainly with without it. Now, my business expanded from there um, to more towards like enterprise accounts and whatnot. But yeah. with all of this today um, in the, the climate we're in right now, I see a real need and, and uh desire to return back to local networking with small businesses and that sort of thing and tapping back into my network, LinkedIn, that sort of thing. Uh, because it is these one-off situations that are hidden in the shadows as far as like um, people doing hiring that I have to be plugged into. And I, that, you know, if you don't already know this, I work in uh, for a staffing firm. So my job is to find uh, people jobs basically and to find companies uh, good candidates. So it's, it's really in the shadows that, that you need to find it really at any stage. So, um, the producer role, like I said, is the low hanging fruit, right? It's, you kind of, it's kind of a rite of passage almost, uh, for me it was. And like I said, you, there's a lot of rah, rah that goes into it. There's a lot of disappointing meetings that you think is going to be something it turns out to be really not at all. And they just want to sell you like, yeah, whatever, you know, like, there's <laughs> right. like, I, I want to talk about that, like the, the funny, like stereotypes of a networking event. I think that would be funny. But um, <laughs> I those have are great as well for that. Yeah, good times. Good times. Yeah, let's definitely go into that one. But um, <laughs> but uh, so so that's a producer role. I think it's that's easy for an accountant. Um, somebody in human resources or uh, a billing department or something like that, or, or like a low level or what a mid-level IT guy or something like that. What, what's the benefit that he or she will have uh, going to a networking event or being well networked in general? I think it actually, I mean, it's interesting you say that because you said you went into your enterprise role. I, I've seen, I, I've seen the similar techniques used in those larger roles. I mean, if you have, need national accounts, I mean, a phenomenal way to meet people is like this tiered approach, like in LinkedIn, you can meet someone in your local community who then can introduce you or is connected to like your target person. Um, so for me, it, it's also important to have a, 
maybe initially, like I guess we're talking about the producer, maybe initially you're throwing mud on the wall and hope some sticks. Yeah. Um, but as you get more clever with it, or you're, you know, you're, uh, you're going to have more of a, a process behind it. And I think when you have those targets, the people you want to meet, the companies you want to get into, um, you can use similar techniques in order to get in there and meet the right people. Yeah. But like anything we see um, in this world, a, a lot of everything in this world is who you know. And, it, you know, and we're in a lot of us are very that uh, that thing they talk about with that actor, six points of separation, whatever. I mean, if you look in, in some of these LinkedIn profiles, you're really connected to some, you know, hard hitting people out there. And depending yeah. on your industry, uh, you know, I don't know who you want, who you need to meet, but if you figure that out and figure the plan and really have a target in place, I think it can be, it can be a phenomenal resource for you and, and really I, the best way in. I want to add on to that. That's um, <laughs> as my, <laughs> my Christian brethren would say, um, that's a good word, brother. Um, that's a good word. Uh, so <laughs> sorry, man, you bring out the silly in me. So it is what it is. Sweet. The, Why do business if you're not having fun, man? That's an excellent point. The uh, So networking is, is kind of a, a really good lesson in playing the long game and seeing how relationships can develop over time. Um, I think you and I have met, I mean, I can count the amount of times on both hands. I would say, I would say actually meeting in person, we've probably met, I don't know, let's see six seven times over the last couple of years yeah, i think that's, that's fair i probably However, actually we, have that data but yeah i agree with that yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> i'll get my guy right on that like i'll get him to, <laughs> to pull that um i believe that's all it was as far as that time but we were consistent with it um i would say almost like clockwork every you know uh three months or so we would get coffee and whatever it may be and you were there to hear me out not just from a business perspective like you were there to hear me when i was kind of like at rock bottom like starting over my life um and uh oddly enough think i think that's when our <laughs> relationship somewhat evolved from you know hey you know how can i connect you with so and so to like tr more of a true friendship and um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to see that evolve kind of organically there, but um, it's a lesson in longevity and it's a lesson in seeing multiple angles of a person uh, more holistically rather than through one lens of this is what they can do or be for me. Um, we, we are not, nobody is just that one dimensional in general. Uh, so what I found out about you and how you are and the conversations we've had through WhatsApp or just texting or like whatever's going on in your life in general has been remarkable. And, 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 you know, I think, um, we, our relationship is one example of many beautiful things that have happened uh, due to this. So I think the word networking in and of itself, um, I'm going to be sick of it probably by the end of this conversation and it does <laughs> carry certain connotations, but right. it is a very powerful, um, survival and thrival tactic, I would say in the world of business. Yeah. Something like 80% so. of folks get jobs through connections or people that they know um, in, in some way, shape or form. So uh, if, if that's not enough, I, I think, you know, you'd be silly not to, to pursue it for that reason. So, it's, yeah. I mean, you, you, I, we get, if we get past a piece of uh, a, uh, a prospect from, from someone who we know and trust us, I mean, it, it's closed business. It's not, it's not a real prospect, a warm, like for us, a warm lead is just, we're, we're just going in there to tell them how we work and how we build that kind of stuff. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it is super powerful. And you mentioned something before. I just want to make sure we say it. When we talk about networking, I'm not talking about, yeah, like a transactional networking. Like you've said, you had some of these meetings where someone is coming to this meeting to sell you when mm -hmm. you very early on knew that no you were coming there to learn about this person and you know you don't have you don't necessarily go super deep in all of these relationships but you know you who am i who am i who am i meeting across from me do are they good people like if we we're going to meet with someone just to meet them i i don't i don't know the point of that um yeah. like to me i'm going there because i want i want to i want to see if i can be a resource for them 
and also to see if they can be a resource for me. So I need to know if this is going to be a good person. If I'm going to put my name on the line to introduce them to someone else, to pass them a potential lead for business like that, that's important. I learned that early on that you do not ever refer someone or introduce someone who, who you don't know and trust. Yeah. It, it can bite you in the tush. Do you have a story in mind that, uh, that comes to mind that that happened or uh, it's like nothing that I can say. I, 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 I I can share one. Uh, if I mean, is you're interested? <laughs> okay. Uh, Are zebra okay. striped? Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> a big swing first. Let's go. A long, a long while back, we don't need to use names or anything. But a long while back, I mean, so we were in IT. I was in IT since forever and ever ago, and I was young, just getting out with We Care and learning my ways to networking. I I met someone at a a networking event who, whose tag said that they were an expert in this and their business card said they were an expert in this. Oh, no. They said they were an expert in this. And <laughs> one of my clients, a new client, who we we're still gaining our trust, a new client had this need. So, oh my gosh, this is the best thing in the world. We were just talking about it this week. You gotta call my client and take care of them. So lo and behold, uh, a week or two later, that client was not my client anymore. No. And luckily it wasn't an enormous client. Um, <laughs> but I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson there that I just, I mean, you need to vet the person. You need to get to know them. I mean, it's, it's a very, even big business, it's very personal. <laughs> like, you know, people who run businesses, I mean, you, you rely on that and you really, you really need to to make sure you're introducing the right people to the right people. Yeah. And it can be tempting to cut corners. Um, I, I get it. I understand why, like I would want somebody to do that for me. Right. Because I know I'm, I'm authentic. Like I'm, I'm, I, I believe in myself and that sort of thing. Um, but you're right. And it, it, it does take, um, longevity. It takes time. It takes, uh, uh, extraction right of the truth of somebody and yeah. being marinated around them um, I, I mentioned this in one of my monologue episodes where i said something it was not one of my most interesting episodes but i, I like it um <laughs> and my mom likes it so that's all that matters so um the the episode is called why why books are so long and uh, i surmised that the reason they are long is, is not just because people have a lot to say. It's because you need to spend time in the good, the bad, and the absolutely boring moments that encompass a particular person or topic to truly envelop who they are and what they bring to the table. You have to. We yeah. don't treat relationships that way, or we ought not to. I think in 2020, we are very surface level in a lot of ways sometimes, but um, that's never a recipe for success in really anything that you do, job, relationships, uh, athletics, fitness, dieting, whatever. Um, so why would it be with books? So I see these things that are out there, like these apps or whatever, and it's like, you know, it's uh, uh, breaks down like these like, you know, Stephen Covey's uh, uh, oh. seven habits of highly effective people in, in five minutes for you. And like the main tenets of it, I'm like, you've got to be in that. You've got to be, and maybe part of me, I'm just like upset. Like I'm angry that like, you know, that they got the same truth or whatever it was like, but there's no possible way that you can spend five minutes on a universal truth like that. And, and a life changing book and get the same thing or nearly the same thing as somebody who spends time days, weeks in it. Um, contemplating working in it and that sort of thing. So I had to make that point. And I think that is a really excellent point on your part about vetting people very properly because uh, the, you, you could really get screwed there. Yeah. In, in alternative too, you said like, can you jumpstart that process or make it go faster? I mean, in reality, when I, when there are certain people in my life, you're included there, buddy. When mm -hmm. you tell me that this person, this other person is good people, that means a lot. So I, I think that that could help jumpstart that relationship and has, I can think in my head right now of a couple of people that when certain people refer me to someone and they like, give me that extra time, like, Oh no, like he's good people, you know, or whatever, whatever, <laughs> yeah, however yeah. they say it. It's like, I, I mean, I take that to heart. 
because yeah. you know we've taken years to to, to create this relationship, mm -hmm. and uh, and why not be efficient with it too when we can and safely? <laughs> uh, of course, I, I can. I'll use a, a very direct and current example. Um, you. <laughs> you connected me with two particular individuals that I'll talk about here. One is Eric. Um, he's a financial advisor who I, I have yet to um, edit the episode that we recorded. Um, I truth be told, I'm very anxious to listen to it because we did it on my phone in his basement on a table where we were both sitting a few feet apart from it. And his like heater kept kicking on. And often I'm like, there's no way this is good audio. So I'm like just legitimately anxious, the most procrastinating thing I've ever done in my life. So that's that. So you may or may not hear an episode with Eric, but absolutely pure good guy. You believe everything he has to say and that it's coming from a place of authenticity. Um, but then secondarily, most recently, Fred, um, you connected oh, me with him. Yeah. Um, Fred is a coach uh, in, in the kind of like, I, I would say like business sales marketing space and just kind of, I would say career coaching space in general. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you. So you, you connected me with him. I wasn't sure where to go with the conversation. He was a really good guy. Um, and he's like, listen, man, like let's set you up with just like a trial run for this and see how it goes. And I, you are not obligated to do anything. If you want to like move forward and connect me with somebody else, that's great. If not, I just like connecting with good people. I am skeptical by that. I call myself an optimistic realist, right? Um, and I understand, of course he wants to sale. I would want to sale, like whatever. We get on the call and I'm telling you, man, it went, it went probably 30 to 45 minutes over. Um, <laughs> I, it was I so it. cathartic to go through and I literally unearthed something from my childhood um, that he asked me, and I'm okay with sharing this. Um, I, I'm sorry. I'm just running with this. He, it's all good. he asked me, so we were talking about like why I'm so, um, driven, right. To do something or be whatever or, or, or anything. And, um, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, you know, why, why do you think you are that way? Whatever. And, and I, I started like talking through it. I'm just kind of like going around in circles. And I was like, you know, when I was younger, like I got picked on a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, I, I was from a really diverse school and, um, you know, there's a lot of differences between everybody there. So, you know, everybody had their thing that they were like cool at and like not cool at and whatever I was not cool at, I was really not cool at. And I got picked on a lot for it. So as I got older and I gained confidence and I started like lifting weights and getting smarter and reading and going to college and all these things. And, um, I, I really gained momentum. Then the, my career hit and I gained confidence in that whole new way. And then this last couple of years and this whatever, um, I was like, yeah, I think it's my childhood. I think that is what I'm trying to prove to people is like, screw you, man. Like whatever from like Derek from sixth grade, like yeah. screw you, you know, or, or the girl that turned me down for a dance in seventh grade or whatever it is, you know, like Heck yeah. it's like, it's like MJ in the last dance when he's talking about how he took everything personally. He took everything personally. And everybody's like, what are you talking about? Why are you, you're like inventing things to be mad about just to have that extra drive. I felt that. And I feel that today um, I just didn't realize that it was and unearthing that moment was so beautiful. So unwrapping all that wow. and just kind of going to the original point I was making is you connected me with that guy. And I had that moment because you and I got coffee two years ago <laughs> and stayed in touch and had great conversations up to, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it it's, wouldn't uh, happen if we didn't. Powerful take man. Yeah. I, 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 I can't really wrap my head around those things. I appreciate it. And I love that that's happening. It, it's a lot to take in <laughs> and I love it. I, it's just, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It, it's, that's, it, uh, it, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a beautiful thanks thing. So thank That's you. A good story. Well, thanks for sharing. Before we move on to the next point, um, I I think it's safe to say that we have to talk about the most awkward moments that we've experienced in networking events, um, or just connecting in general. You already shared one funny one. Um, I'd like to get your brain going, the juice is flowing by kind of describing to those who aren't really familiar with it, what networking events are like. 
And I'm going to explain the worst ones. And those are going to be the 8 a.m. ones where you do your 30 second pitch. Okay. Great. So the one we met at, um, bless, bless their hearts. Um, it was probably at any given time, six or 60 or 70 people. Oh yeah. In a big room in like the upper room of a library or something like that. Yeah. Jump off the cliff into that one, man. Like, gosh, <laughs> day one. <laughs> I, so you walk in there with the handful of, you know, cards and you don't really know what to expect and you go in and it's a lot of people. And it's like, it's just basically one big horseshoe and everybody gives a 30 second pitch about what they do, um, what kind of lead they're looking for. And afterwards there's like a 10 to 15 minute presentation of like a speaker who may or may not pay for their spot. I don't really know, depending on how the chamber's doing. Um, and then after that, um, I think there's like a slight open conversation and then it's just like cards, 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 let's get coffee. Let's get coffee. Let's get coffee. And then you just go back and you're just like super like, hopped up on caffeine and jazz <laughs> and then you go back and then and you know you set up those meetings and that sort of thing and then you're always disappointed that the one person that you didn't want to exchange cards with called you first and that's pretty much how networking events go yeah boom just like that <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good description of it man yeah well also the, the 30 seconds sometimes people take four minutes and if the meeting's not run well you're like hey we're sleeping over here let's go we got 60 Dude. people together <laughs> The creative ways that they come up with interrupting people is pretty great too. Like they, <laughs> I had one where they actually had a timer on your phone and it would go off if you went past 30 seconds. Love that. Love that. You know, it's, it's needed. It's needed. But does anything come to mind? Any, any stories at all that comes to mind? A story comes to mind in the, and I actually changed the way I confirm my meetings now, <laughs> depending, depending on how the person communicates with me. Um, cause I'm, I, I've been taught that networking is about asking questions, finding out about the other person it, and then hopefully the other person has a clue too. And also will ask you those questions because we're right. both there to share and practice and get more business, be help each other, whatever. Um, and, and I've, in theory. I've in theory and, and, I, and I, I feel like I went back to my communication after this one meeting. I was like, did I miss something? But I, I sat down with this young lady and I swear she pulled out a binder and went through like a sales, pre no, didn't like. She went through a sales presentation for something that had nothing to do with me. I didn't request it. it. It wasn't mentioned before in our communication. And I was just like the whole meeting, I was just annoyed. <laughs> and it was a complete waste of my time. It was a complete waste of her time because I... I didn't have any buy-in to listen to anything she was saying. It was just, it was bizarre. It's like mm -hmm. when someone calls you and they don't say, I mean, sorry, a practice that I've used <laughs> for many years is when I call anyone and say, hey, am I catching you at a bad time? Even when I have a scheduled call, which all my calls are scheduled because I don't like to just, anyway, sorry. We don't need to go into that now. <laughs> um, anyway, so it was, I was just dumbfounded I, I didn't understand where this came from in it yeah in in that i guess that was another telling moment in my life that i depending on the, if i don't if i know the person and i kind of or know of the person i know they kind of get it i don't really need to go into it but i have like a template of we're going to get together and i'm not looking to sell you and i'm not looking to be sold <laughs> it's like like i really go down to like there's a hundred out of a hundred people who read this would have to come to the same conclusion <laughs> Anyways, so that that's 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 a good one. Oh, so an awkward one like actual networking. If you want that, I I was um I, I was at a, a young person's networking group, and I was I had already been networking for a while, but new to this organization, okay. and I it was it was always billed as a prof you know a a young professionals organization, and so that's all I ever heard. That's what I understood. People that I knew in it were business people so I went to this event and normally you meet people you exchange cards and after the first time someone like gave me a weird face like when I was giving them a card I was like this is a networking event like what's going on like I asked one of my friends like what is happening and that happened like a couple times <laughs> during the night and I was just like I don't know what's going on here so come to it so it was very awkward for me because I was you know all in it to network there's people in good companies that I wanted to network with or meet and have further conversations 
anyways, I found out that it's, it, this organization was more of a, a get together uh, organization where young people, professionals like to get together and find relationships, whatever. Um, <laughs> so that was, that was bizarre because I also got married quite young. So I, I was not on the market. I had zero clue that this was going on. And not like anyone hit on me or anything, but it was just, they were like, like, well, like I'm an alien. I'm like, I, it says networking here. It's just like business event. Like, how is it? I don't know. Dude, that's, I don't know if that's what, funny, but that was funny. <laughs> that's what those have become in a lot of ways. Um, and I've never gone to one as a single person. Um, but I'm telling you, I went to one in West Hartford um, at a amazing Mexican restaurant over there in Bishop's Corner. Um, oh, I think yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Ocho, the Ocho yeah, Cafe or something like that. It's unbelievable. Um, and I went in and I felt, I almost felt like I had to cover up my skin. You know, I had to be like this. It was the vibe in there was, it was, it was intense. Like it was very intense. Like it was, it was, you know, everybody's getting trashed. Like, you know, margaritas are flowing and, and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to pay my bills here. Um, you know, and, and I get it. I understand. What do you expect is going to happen when you put a, a bunch of 20 somethings in a room with, with unlimited alcohol? I get that. Um, but those are hilarious and very bizarre social customs to kind of like adjust on the fly, you know, oh, like yeah. it's, it's, it's weird. Cause you kind of have to like take in the vibe of like, okay, is this one of those networking events? Like, is this like, I had one where I went to uh, another Mexican restaurant in Hartford and it was a paid one, which I'm not a big fan of those. Um, because why would you do that? Um, <laughs> but uh, y- y- we went there and I brought my buddy James, who at the time was working at the same company. And, um, you know, that was a big initiative by our team was like, hey, we've right. got to like, we've got to like go to network events and put ourselves out there. And he doesn't like those things at all. He hated so many aspects of the job of, of sales and putting yourself out there and getting rejected and that sort of thing is very, like somewhat socially awkward in that way, even though he's mm-hmm. hilarious. Um, but we, I, I, I will never forget this. Um, you know, a couple drinks in just kind of floating around business cards, business cards. And these two guys come up and, and they're, I, I'm saying they're probably pushing 50, 50, maybe, you know, late fifties, almost 60, um, maybe some Botox. I wasn't sure. Um, and, um, <laughs> one guy, he had a name tag that, I is the name is escaping right now and I'm, I'm going to, it's driving me, it's going to drive me crazy, but it was something really inappropriate for a uh, professional networking event. And basically went from there to watching him for the next half an hour, essentially sexually harass um, every woman within 10 square feet of him um, and, you know, make suggestions and that sort of thing. So we try, you know, trying to like kind of draw his attention away and that sort of thing. Uh, but he, I mean, he was making very direct innuendos about what he wanted to do and what he was there for and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. And apparently this was what he did. This was his thing on weeknights. Every night he'd pay the 20, $25 fee, pay for his drinks, whatever. And that was just, his entertainment. Oh man. It was really uncomfortable. That's- that's right. Yeah, that's, I'm uncomfortable right now thinking about it. <laughs> I'm just uncomfortable by those people in general um, that uh, you can live your life that way. But um, uh, so creepy, creepy. Yes. So so <laughs> as far as you are concerned, <clears throat> yeah. there's much more to you than just the networker. Uh, you have run a successful business and you're an entrepreneur for almost two decades now. And that is not a small feat, uh, especially in Connecticut where a lot of people could make the argument, a good argument that starting and running a business is difficult. Um, um, I, I've heard that right from other entrepreneurs. Um, you're good at what you do. You have good rapport. You have a good reputation. As far as what else matters to you besides doing a good job and being a good father and husband 
I want to hear, I want people to know about the other side of you, the phil philanthropic side of you. The, and the two come to mind, um, the, the, the world traveling part, and then the local more current, um, like equipment, uh, uh, philanthropy yeah. that you're pursuing. So please tell us about that. Yeah. So, so community, community, community has been a, an enormous thing in my life forever. My parents instilled that in me young. My parents both gave of their time to, to serve as the community. And there was this, there's this saying that I remember, I'm getting like chills thinking about it right now that, <laughs> that you're, I mean, your job, your job in this world is to help heal it. So what I'm, what I'm trying to implant in my team, my employees, my teams is that we're out here to help heal the world. So that, that has just resonated with me forever. Um, <clears throat> so things that we've been doing for ever since I started, I mean, we're, we support, uh, local sports teams. So we're always supporting the soft girls, softball teams, uh, baseball teams, um, their soccer teams, basketball teams back in the day. Um, all, all these local activities that t were so important to me, but also so important and vibrant for a community. Um, mm -hmm. So showing support there has been very important. Uh, we're always looking and trying to do what we can for the nonprofits in our area. Uh, in our community, well, an extended community. Um, I mean, we're, we're a small company, uh, so giving financially is not always there, but we always have had interesting ways to help, to help, to help whenever people ask. So we can give donations to, for raffle prizes to help them raise money. Certainly we can promote, uh, promote their events. Um, specifically, a couple of things that I've been working on for the past this was four years so far. I've been going to the Dominican Republic over the entire week of Thanksgiving. Now, mind you, this was Thanksgiving is big for my family. Uh, I mean, huge. So when this first came up, uh, my older son, Sam, he's 19 now, an amazing giant, tall. Um, he, he was in his, uh, his class at University High School, grade school with a lovely teacher, um, Liz, well, she's now Liz Devaney, and she was talking about this trip to go to the Dominican Republic and help um, the sugarcane workers. A lot of them are Haitian refugees that are promised a better life to come over from Haiti into the DR, which if you've been to the DR, there are certain sides of it where you see like the, um, there's a lot of resorts there, but for four years, I, I, di I didn't even know that I, I've heard about it. I heard like the places, but <laughs> where I've gone has been these sugarcane communities. There's um, called Bates. And uh, in my, my son, being amazing kid like he is, as she was talking about it, she mentioned the teacher, Liz, said, well, we need volunteers. So Sam, like, instantly, like, my dad will do it. Like, no conversation. This is just like up. And he came home and told me about it. I was like, that sounds amazing. Um, so, wow. with, so with that work, yeah, it's... It wait, was, wait, wait, wait. I, oh. I don't remember you telling me this part. I mean, maybe it's just my memory. So you're saying... The genesis of this was your son basically volunteered you for it once he heard about it four years ago, and you were like, "Yeah, let's go, <laughs> let's do it." That yeah, that that was that that was the reason we I ever went. He wanted to do it, and um, I mean, it sounded amazing—a good bonding experience for me, well, for us. Um, and it was just so powerful. It's a year long. I mean, it's not like I mean, you go over Thanksgiving, but there's a lot to do beforehand. I mean, there's a significant amount of fundraising that needs to be done. A lot of what those communities need are simple essential items like toothpaste, toothbrushes. Because when you're making like $20 a week, maybe we never got real answers, but, mm. and only during the cutting season, um, you're not gonna buy a toothbrush when you need to eat. <laughs> like they're, yeah. you know, they're making these choices that you know, we don't even, we, don't, we can't even fathom the choices that people have to, that many people have to, have to make in the world. Anyhow, so it was, it was amazing. I saw high school students, many of them people would call privileged, coming from good homes, good schools. Um, they team up with Watkinson School, or Watkinson School actually started it in Hartford. Love that school. Um, amazing work they do. Uh, and it was just amazing. I, I, it was amazing to see my son just give of himself out there and just, I mean, we're, there's a, there's a, a multiple things that we do in there. I don't know how much detail you want to go, but we usually bring some doctors. So we do a medical clinic 
because these people are only ever getting seen by anyone when these groups come. So there's a couple other groups that come during the year. So you're talking about months in between seeing a doctor and they're not living in what we're used to here. We're talking about poor conditions. Like if someone hurts themselves, like they come to the doctor and it's been wrapped for three months and you're like, you know what's under there. If not, I mean, it's like, it's amazing the stuff that, that they see. Uh, we also have construction teams, which was what I was super interested in doing and I fell in love with it. And, um, and we went and my eyes were just opened because you can hear about it. And even now I'm talking about it and it's like, it's very different there. But we went into this, this Bate the first time, Bate Papita it's called, and the homes, the homes that people are living in are corrugated tin on the roofs and the sides. So corrugated tin is scrap here. Um, you yeah. might have a, I mean, they might, like some barbecue places might build that for their barbecue pits, but they're not, people aren't living in it. Uh, so they leak their, when it's windy, they fall down. So mm. our, our mission for the building side of it was to, is to continually to build weatherproof homes. So when we got there on this bate, it was the first year that we ever went there. There were, um, there was a cleared out area for where the homes were going to go, but no homes were built. I went back and we, I can tell more details if you want, but I went back this fourth year, we have nine homes built already and and they're they're made of concrete and they're coolish in the summer and it's amazing work yeah and the, i see these kids giving them themselves the dominicans uh there there are some hired uh people that know the, the construction crews there that help work but once they once the villagers get to know you you come there a couple of days they see your big uh yellow i mean they drive us it's a mission that handles this whole thing so you know, we're driving these yellow school buses, no AC or anything like that. Like we're in it. Um, and they start to get to know us. They say, who are these, who are these white people coming here to help us out? And they're like, we're here to help. And our, our leader, she touched my life. I'll never, I'll never, ever forget her, Jenny French. And she, one of her biggest things, ooh, <clears throat> one of her biggest things when going in there is talking about, sure, we're here to build houses, but we're here to make friends. So one of the biggest things she talked about, you look these people in the eyes, they are people just like you and you shake their hands. And it was amazing seeing these, these kids, teenagers, just like hand in hand, building these homes, literally in mud and lots of poop, the animals <laughs> run free there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just working together towards this common goal for them. And it was, it still is, it's just massively impactful for me. Um, it, 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 it really gives me hope for our future, no matter what's going on in the world right now. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> man. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I want so badly to go into like current events and that sort of thing. That's a whole, that's a whole other thing. Another time. Um, cause that's on my mind as well, but that's, that's a good thing to hear, um, that there are pockets of the world and, and people like yourselves who are really pouring yourself into the lives of the other of others uh, and committed to it year after year, not just in that one event where you're there, but there's, like you said, there's so much in the background and the 365 days, uh, I should say probably 200 358 other, uh, days of the year that you, you have to plan for it as well. Um, what, what is the, the name? Is there a name of the mission in particular that, uh, people can know about, um, in, in case somebody is inspired and, and wants to donate or be interested, involved or whatever. Yeah. The Good Samaritan Mission is the name of it. And when, uh, if, I don't know if we are, if how this goes up, if there's links or stuff, but certainly yeah. the Watkinson School has a relationship with them always when we, when we get the trip uh, running, well, I don't, it's not going to happen this year. Uh, usually we have a GoFundMe page too, so people can donate there. But I mean, we're, we're always accepting toothbrushes, toothpaste. I mean, I've gone out to local dentists and, and um, orthodontists and they're just like, oh my gosh, yes. And they give me like boxes of toothbrushes and Jeez. organizations around here. They're just so generous and so willing to help. It's amazing. So uh, we collect shoes because uh, shoes are big because who, who wants to spend money on shoes and the kids grow so quickly um, and mm. vitamins and over the counter things. But, yeah, we, we're still collecting all that and we, we store it all and we 
everyone bring, when we go, we have one duffel or one travel bag for ourselves, and each person brings one travel bag full of stuff that we go and donate and bring and bring to the people. Oh. Um, yeah, that's that's a pretty that's a, quite an impactful thing. And and now since going back four years, now they now they know you. And uh, mm, this past mm -hmm. year, we finished we finished one of the wall and it's amazing when you can actually finish a home. It is a, a faith-based organization. So there's lots of blessing going on all the time. And I just adore it and love it. And it's just, it's phenomenal. But when you get to, when you finish a home and we were there this year, they have like this ceremony and it was so beautiful in the family that was moving in. We got to have, they were all standing there and we had like this, um, Jenny said this beautiful prayer. And uh, one of the, one of the, the DR uh, translator leader guys said something and it's just, it was just like the most powerful thing. The kids are just like, I mean, we're covered in cement and nasty. And it's just the most beautiful thing in the world. Yeah. Um, and I happen to know that the one, of, one of my good buddies there on the Bate, his, his parents were moving into this home. And you can just see they're just like so proud and so happy to have something that they call their own that well, next time there's a big rain, it's not going to fall down, and, it, and they're going to they're going to have a safe place for their family. Um, so that so that's that's a quick synopsis of my work there. <laughs> um, <laughs> recently, recent so this kind of all happened in March this year, March thirteenth. I so it was our kind of our cutoff date, uh, or what what happened. So we we came up as a company. We thought, okay we're in computers, we're in technology, what is happening out there? Where is their need? Well, all of a sudden schools were now not canceled, well, canceled, but moving to remote learning. Um, companies were shutting down going to remote, going to remote. So yeah. we, we do a lot of, um, we work with a lot of small to medium sized businesses. So we do, you know, if a company has 20, 50 machines, you upgrade their machines and usually recycle the other machines. So, like huh maybe there's a need for these other machines that we normally just bring to the recycling plant whatever so um discussing with the team we came up with this idea there are students who are going to be in need who for parents i mean there's so much uncertainty right now yeah. you know e even if you have a job or you have a job today we don't know if you're going to have it tomorrow am i really going to spend a thousand fifteen hundred bucks on a computer right now like that's that's a big stretch yeah. so so we we put the word out there we had we had a, a a good well not a good amount like two dozen machines um of our own that were ready to be recycled basically but still very sufficient and still uh app, um current enough to very current enough to, to use so we put we kind of put it out we put it out there like hey we're creating this program we care computer students in need please contact us if if I think our initial communication might have been only about if you have any needs, contact us. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that, how that, this that came to like be. A... This episode came to be. Oh, because <laughs> you were like reaching out about that, and we were talking oh. about it. And I was like trying to think of like who could help, and we had some ideas. And then um, I, I, I thought, um, you know, I'm starting to like ramp up like scheduling episodes and that sort of thing. I was like, dude, you got to come on. It's something I've been wanting to do. Again, procrastination. But yeah, that's how we got here is like we were talking about this particular initiative that you came up with. It was so so the the um the outpouring of need was way bigger than we thought. Wow. Um and we immediately got contacted by some well by Crack. They said we can use their name. Uh the Crack which <laughs> has which uh I guess the over overriding body of a bunch of school systems and they were they were we had we've had I don't know, a thousand emails together already. Like, I mean, it's, wow. it's, a, it's a lot of work to get this settled, but we said, this is what we have. What's your need? So they, they pulled the different schools and saw where, where was their need? Cause we, we want these, you know, again, thinking about healing the world, what's a better way to heal the world than make sure the young people can still learn and, and be with it and be yeah. current. So it was amazing. Um, then soon after we were like, Oh, again, we're a small company. We want to do all that we can providing the labor at, at no cost. Like we want to do that. Um, and also mind you, we we're still a small company. We're still hit very hard by all this, but you know what? For letting our minds focus on others has been amazing for us mentally. 
Um, and I think it's, it's, it's doing great things. So we're, we're going to be okay. Uh, so, so, we, we put, so we put our heads together and now we said, oh my gosh, we have this need. So I think then we put out communication like, okay, we need some support here. Like we have these machines, but we don't have monitors. So um, the first organization, Solomon Schechter Day School, the head of school there is Andrea. And she was like, oh my goodness, Avi, we have all these monitor flat screen, like up to date that we just did this upgrade or whatever. We don't need them anymore. We would love to donate them. So they donated like tw almost two dozen monitors for us. And from wow. that, we were able to match the first, the first two dozen machines with these students. And uh, I was working with Jill and Kim at Crec, and they, they came and, and oh, so also during this time, our office is closed. Uh, I mean, we can still go in it. We just don't have many people in there at the same time. Um, but like, so we're not using that. So we're using my house. So we're, we have, we have all these machines and they came and picked them up and they were just like elated. And they had, they had this, they set up a pickup for the students. So they came, just them came to pick up the machines from my place. And then they went to a drop-off point for the, the students and families. And they were just like, it was just magic. Um, the kids were so excited. We got some pictures of all people in like face mask and waving thumbs up. Like, thank yeah. you so much. It was just like so touching. So, so as we, as we posted this stuff and continued out, then we find there's more school systems that I guess Craig doesn't run that, that needs help from East Hartford and other places. And it's just, it's amazing. So we said, okay, we're still asking for individuals to give uh, to provide their machines that we can that we can take care of. Ask some businesses like, hey, if you're going through an upgrade, please consider instead of recycling your machines, like let us let us refurbish them for the students. Certainly, the guys take care of all the data scrubbing and all that. Um, and then we set up a GoFundMe page, and I think like to, I guess I don't even think it's been up a month yet, but a couple. A couple weeks into it, we got some nice donations. Our amazing mayor, Sherry, was our first donator. She's, oh, she's such a good woman um, of West Harvard. And, uh, and she's like posting about it and telling her friends. We've had some friends in local nonprofits passing the word around. And then out of nowhere, an anonymous donor came to, seem, to me seemingly out of nowhere. But as we said before, you never know where the words go and all this. And she's like, all right, we're going to give a matching grant. Oh, yeah, we'll do $1,000. <laughs> what? I mean, Whoa. we're accepting like $25 here, $15 there, a couple hundred here. So if we, when we raise $1,000 before, oh, yeah, it's like, I think we're going to do it before even June starts. But before the end of June, she's going to match up to $1,000, which is phenomenal. Um, oh and that, God. in our GoFund, we have the list of what each item costs so we can get this stuff out. So, yeah, it's it's felt really good and the support has been awesome. WFSB contacted us and they, they put us on the, like they have a segment of heroes on the community or something. It's like, yeah, man. So touching. It's like, it's just like, this wow. thing is taking on a life it's, of its, its own. I mean, you, you had like this. So cool. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, you had like this idea of what a problem was and then it just morphed into this monster of what it is today and this realization and, Man, I, I think I can speak for anybody if they're watching this video or when they're watching this video or listening, um, <laughs> the excitement and life came back into you. It's, it's very clear. It's very evident. Why the hell do you care so much about the world around <laughs> you, right? I think that's the most obvious question. Um, it might sound rude, but I... Nobody else, not many other people are out there caring so much and doing so much. We, we virtue signal and we say X, Y, and Z that we do care about this, but we don't take action like you're taking action. Why? Why? I, I, I feel like the community has always supported me, uh, my family, and certainly my business. Uh, I mean, we've been loyal members of the chamber forever and, you know, we we try to be, we are real. <laughs> we, yeah. we do good work. Um, I, I just think support, I, I, it's, it's probably my parents' fault, man. Just like everything is <laughs> like, I mean, there's, there's all this craziness going on and people are doing crazy things and there are people doing amazing things. I like, let's focus on the amazing things and like do more and put more effect on this, and, like push this stuff over here. And like, what can I do as a, as a, as a man to help heal this world? And it's like, this could be a powerful thing. 
And I think we talked, I don't think we talked about it on here, but oh, we talked about it over email the other day. So we just, I just like, let's put it out there. Let's put it out into ether. Yeah, and yeah, see yeah. What, what comes of it, man. And, and, and now I have, and, and, I, and we have individuals who are, you know, an individual home. A woman brought us two laptops at a desk, like a home, a home. And she's like, oh my goodness, I'm going to talk to this person. I'm going to post about it here. I'm like, I love you. Like, I haven't known, we, don't, we never even knew each other before this. And she's like, already <laughs> like, I'm going to make this thing happen. And we can get some monitors from Glastonbury. I know this person here. I'm like, do it. Another wow. woman, she's like, I want to post this in, in my church newsletter. She's like, she reads me like a whole thing. Is that okay what I wrote? I'm like, <laughs> it was beautiful. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the the kids are just like loving it, um, yeah. So yeah. So so we're st we still want we still need a lot more <laughs> resources, a lot yeah. more money, and we also want to know who else is in need. Uh, cause I I don't also like to think. I sorry. I like to think. Say so what I do like to do. I like to think big. So right now we're taking care of the Hartford County and Hartford you know surrounding area, and I'm sure there's need elsewhere also. Um, but we're going to hit it around here first and, and see what we can do. So unreal, man. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unwind. Here we go. Here we go. So oh, yeah. I'm here. My last, I mean, we had, we have other questions, but I, I want to end this on a really high note, um, okay. as well. <sighs> kind of going along the same theme after your life ends. Sorry, it's going to happen someday. What do you want the world True. to look like because of you? The world to look like. I, I, I think I would be happy if I could just add a little happy and goodness in this world. What I would want the world to look like is um, people working together. <clears throat> that would be powerful. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. I think together <clears throat> we can, together we can accomplish anything, but like really together. I, I think I can speak on behalf of everybody, uh, and say that you're, you're, uh, one of the best men that I know. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to, to add to that. Um, but, uh, that, that might've never been more clear than this conversation and I've had many with you. So, um, I, cool. I know that you're authentic. I know that you're honest and, and this is, this is definitely not for show. Uh, you're a good man and I, I want to, uh, be here and work together with you <laughs> according to your, your goal and your mission. And I think that's a definitely a worthy cause for sure. Anything else you want to add? I feel full, man. Thank you. Yes. That is beautiful. How can people get in contact with you if they'd like to? Uh, <clears throat> give emails is all right. <laughs> yeah, whatever you feel comfortable with. <laughs> Social security numbers, whatever you need. Uh, sure. Well, my company is WeCareComputers.com. You could find us there. We have lots of amazing stuff. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, my name's Avi, A-V-I, and you can, you can reach me at my address there. And if you're nervous to contact him directly because you're afraid you're, to get too close to a pure soul, uh, you can go through <laughs> a, a slightly damaged soul like me, and then I'll get you in contact with Avi. <laughs> well, my team is amazing also, so if you have like technical needs, whatever, I mean, also info, <laughs> I-N-F-O is, my people are amazing um for real and i always hire more intelligent people than me to uh because they're great people tom ricketts said that i believe the owner of the cubs he said hire good people who hire or hire smart people who hire smart people and let them do their thing so uh wise words uh from from you and him as well so dude amazing having you on this will be part one of a series of having you on i am sure i definitely want to keep people apprised to how uh, things have progressed with this particular initiative of the um, actual like electronic equipment and whatnot, but also um, the trip to the uh, district 
excuse me, District of Columbia, um, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. and um, whatever else you have planned that I'm sure you don't even realize is going to hit you. Uh, like I said, you're a good man, and I'm, I'm glad to have you in my life, brother. So um, let's end it on that, shall we? Heck yeah. Awesome. I'll catch you later, bro. Be awesome. See ya. Peace.